To answer the question, what is the carbon footprint of beef, we first need to start with a definition of a carbon footprint. A carbon footprint is a measure of quantifying the greenhouse gas emissions that result from the production of any given food item, product, activity, or industry. A carbon footprint is typically expressed as greenhouse gas emissions per unit of product or for a given activity. For beef, this means greenhouse gas emissions that are produced per pound of beef. It is also important to note that carbon footprints usually correct greenhouse gas emissions to a carbon dioxide equivalent basis. While carbon dioxide is often the most publicized greenhouse gas, many other molecules can act as heat trapping compounds in the atmosphere, including water vapor, methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. Methane and nitrous oxide are the two most important greenhouse gas emissions from beef production and come from microbial processes in cattle digestive systems, manure, and from the soil. These different gases have different potentials to trap heat in the atmosphere relative to carbon dioxide, along with different atmospheric lifetimes, or the time that the compound will stay in the atmosphere. As such, it is typical to correct all gases to a 100-year carbon dioxide equivalent basis. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, periodically updates these global warming potentials based upon the latest scientific data. For the most recent IPCC report, methane was assigned a 100-year global warming potential of 28, and nitrous oxide was assigned a 100-year global warming potential of 265. That means for each pound of methane emitted into the atmosphere, it is equivalent to 28 pounds of carbon dioxide, and each pound of nitrous oxide is equivalent to 265 pounds of carbon dioxide on a 100-year time basis. For carbon footprints, life cycle assessment methodology is typically used to account for all greenhouse gas emissions emitted from cradle to grave. Cradle to grave for beef production would include any emissions from the production of feed, the animals themselves, transportation, processing, and from the retail, food service, and consumer sectors of the beef value chain. Knowing the scope or boundaries of a life cycle assessment is important when evaluating the carbon footprint. For example, most life cycle assessments of beef in the scientific literature are actually cradle to farm gate, meaning the accounting for greenhouse gas emissions stops once the beef animal leaves the farm, ranch, or feedlot for harvest. In such assessments, the emissions from processing through to the consumer are unaccounted for. Additionally, life cycle assessments of beef production can vary in the assumptions and prediction equations they use to estimate greenhouse gas emissions. For example, several enteric methane emissions prediction equations exist for LCA practitioners to use, all of which may generate slightly different results. Enteric methane is the methane that is generated by microorganisms in the cattle's digestive tracts. Thus, it is important to be mindful of potential differences in methodology when comparing carbon footprint results. What have some of the recent LCAs or life cycle assessments of beef found? As this figure of recent LCAs of U.S. and Canadian beef production systems demonstrates, there is a considerable variation in reported carbon dioxide equivalent emissions per unit of beef. For these 20 peer-reviewed analyses, the carbon footprint of beef ranged from 13.3 to 31.3 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions per kilogram of beef carcass weight, with a mean of 22.1. It is important to note that except for the analysis of Sanders and Weber in 2014, all of these analyses are partial life cycle assessments that do not include emissions from processing, transportation, retail, food service, or from the consumer. So why is the range so large? Partly the results are due to different methodologies and partly due to the production systems that were assessed. 
Which brings up an important point that it's important to understand the context or the production system and differences that can occur in terms of greenhouse gas emissions from production system to production system. With that variation in mind, it can be important to think about the larger context, such as where along the beef production chain the bulk of the greenhouse gas emissions are coming from. Among published beef life cycle assessments, there is variation. However, the cow-calf phase of the beef production chain tends to produce more greenhouse gas emissions than the feedlot phase of production. The percent of the carbon footprint to the farm gate shown are an average of four recent partial LCA reviewed publications. Most of the greenhouse gas emissions from animal production, or including the cow-calf, stocker, and feedlot phases, occurs from enteric fermentation or the methane and nitrous oxide emissions from manure. The reason that these greenhouse gas emissions on a CO2 equivalent basis tend to be higher in the cow-calf phase is twofold. One, there are more animals in the cow-calf phase. Typically, every cow has one calf per year. That means there needs to be a large population of beef cows to support beef production in the U.S. continuously maintained around the year, which is currently around 30 million animals, according to the USDA. As such, a part of their normal digestive processes, these animals will eructate methane from their rumens, from their mouths. The second reason why the cow-calf phase tends to produce a greater percent of the total carbon footprint is relative to enteric methane production. Contrary to what many believe, peer-reviewed research has observed that enteric methane emissions are actually higher per animal and per unit of feed intake for cattle-fed high-fiber diets like most of the beef cows in the United States consume, as compared to those animals that consume diets that contain more rapidly fermentable carbohydrates, like most feedlot cattle. A carbon footprint is simply a snapshot in time, so it may be more instructive to see how the carbon, beef carbon footprint has changed over time, rather than just looking at a single point in time. Is the beef industry increasing its carbon footprint, decreasing its carbon footprint? Is it unchanged? For the U.S. beef system, there are a couple of peer-reviewed publications that have attempted to quantify the changes in carbon footprint over time. Again, these publications use different methodology, assumptions, and scopes. For example, Rotz and others used an LCA of the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center in Nebraska, while Capper used an LCA of the entire U.S. beef system. However, in both of these analyses, the carbon footprint of beef declined over time. The decreased carbon footprint is due to improvements in production efficiency of the beef system, meaning we're decreasing inputs required per unit of beef output. These improvements include genetic selection of animals for more efficient conversion of feed into body weight gain, advancements in animal nutrition, and the use of biotechnologies such as growth promoters that increase the efficiency of cattle converting feed into body weight gain. These improvements in production efficiency also result in beef production in the U.S. having one of the lowest carbon footprints in the world. The highest carbon footprints for beef production are often found in production systems which are more extensive, meaning animals are raised completely on pasture or rangeland, and in systems where those animals are perhaps not managed exclusively for production of meat as they are in the United States. Cattle and other livestock are held as a source of wealth or an investment around the world, a source of draft power and a food security insurance policy, and a source of fuel considering their manure for many uh, farmers around the world. For these smallholder farmers and other family farmers, which are farms that mostly operate for subsistence and rely almost exclusively on family labor, their cattle are very important for their livelihoods, and managing them to reduce the carbon footprint of beef production may not be on the forefront of their minds. With all of this context in mind, it is important to note that much of the interest in the carbon footprint of beef is driven by analyses that have shown that beef has one of the highest carbon footprints of all food items. 
An internet search of the term's beef carbon footprint will result in a variety of both science-based and other information, concluding that beef has one of the highest carbon footprints. Is that true? Put simply, yes, particularly if comparisons across food items are made on a carbon dioxide equivalent emissions basis per kilogram product. This is perhaps a misleading way to compare carbon footprints across food products, as the nutrient content and density of a kilogram of, say, iceberg lettuce is not equivalent to a kilogram of beef. However, when corrected to comparisons of carbon footprints expressed per calorie or per unit of protein, beef still tends to have a higher carbon footprint than other food items. Why is this? This comes back to the major contributors to the beef carbon footprint. The enteric methane emissions from the supporting cattle herd, namely the beef cows that produce all the calves for the next year, and the fact that enteric methane represents 60% of the carbon footprint of beef. So while there are some dietary strategies to reduce enteric methane emissions, methane emissions are also a natural part of the digestive process of all ruminants, whether domesticated beef cattle or wild deer or bison. The microorganisms that reside within the rumen and produce methane are an essential part of the microbial ecology of that system and allow cattle to be efficient digesters of fibrous feed material, which includes grass, hay, silages, which are fermented forages, and byproduct feeds such as cottonseed. This ability to digest fibrous material is different compared to non-ruminant animals, which are not as efficient at digesting fibrous feed, such as pigs and chickens. Fiber is largely made up of cellulose, a carbohydrate that gives the plant structural strength. Only bacterial enzymes can break down cellulose into its individual units of glucose or sugar. Many units of sugar that make up cellulose are essentially solar energy captured via photosynthesis. Thus, if it were possible to eliminate the microorganisms responsible for enteric methane, this would have negative consequences for the digestion of fibrous material and cattle's ability to capture solar energy that is unavailable to humans. As such, this is a sustainability trade-off of beef and other ruminant meat production systems such as sheep or goats. Beef does have a higher carbon footprint compared to many other food items, however, Beef production can also utilize fibrous feed material on land that is not suitable for row crop agriculture. And cattle can consume byproducts from human food, fuel, and fiber production, for example, beet pulp from sugar production, corn gluten and distiller's grains from ethanol production, and cottonseed from cotton production. Determining which of these aspects of beef sustainability is more important is a challenging prospect and involves many different value judgments. That said, researchers at Oklahoma State University and other land-grant universities are continuously focused on improving the efficiency and the sustainability of beef cattle production.